Welcome to the third lecture of this uh, course, master level course in sustainable development, sustainability science. Uh, especially welcome to the newcomers. I should tell everyone that the previous lectures, one and two, are available on the homepage of the course, which is provided by the Swedish RLC Society. There are both, um, you know, YouTube. Um, recordings of the lectures and all the pictures we can see. And now I hope it's possible. Do you see a new slide now? Do you see a new slide saying energy supply and use? Hello, do you see this? Yes, yes, we see. Uh, good, then we uh, start with the first part, which is about this, as you see. And this oh, so is now very. Sorry, Lars, but we see just your PowerPoint uh, presentation, not, not uh, the slides. You, we see the whole presentation, so you have to change. Uh -huh. You are shit. No. It's something is wrong here. I see this now. Let's see. You see this? No? Yeah. The energy but used per capita in different societies. Yes. It's not working quite the way I expected it to. <clears throat> well, anyhow, you have a slide now, hopefully. So energy use per capita in different societies. And we start with the very primitive. Uh, humans are just biological entities. And of course, then there is 2.4 kilowatt hours per day, meaning that each of us biologically, so to speak, are 100 watts. Now, students, which are a little younger, certainly are 100 watts. Me being a little older, are less than 100 watts. But anyhow, that is um, the energy um, part of us. When the uh, civilization developed, the gatherers and hunters, we expect about 10 kilowatts hour per day. Agriculture appeared a few thousand years ago, then it was up to 50. And then industrial society, some 300 years ago or so, it's between 1500 kilowatt hours per day. And today it's about 250. So we are using about 100 times more energy than what our biology demands. Quite much. Hmm? You see, oh, shit, no, it's not working again. Like that, no. <laughs> Yeah, here is, you see a new slide now? Hello. Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay, so daily consumption of energy per capita, just as we said before. And you see on the lower table, you have primitive men, hunting men, agricultural men, and so on, industrial men, and technological men, that is today. And you see, if you look, it's about 250, a little less in this estimation. You see a third about this, used for transportation. About a third or a little more is used for industry. And about a third or so is used for um, home, what's needed in home, you know, commerce, that is eating, building, etc. So for food, it's only 10. This one that's really needed, you know. So you see, we're using a lot more energy than what the um, biology demands from us. And this is what kind of energy we are using. Do you see a new slide now? I hope so. Hello. Yes, we see that. Ah, very good, very good. Okay, so you see, originally it was just biomass, you know, wood, burning wood, etc., <clears throat> eating plants and so on. And then, uh, today, it's very much dominated by fossil fuels. You have coal, oil, and gas. It's completely dominant. It's, th this is global, so it means over the entire world. And we see about 85% or so fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas being used. This is, uh, this is data up to 2019. And this is data between 1990 and 2018, and you see it's increasing. It's increasing 
especially oil use is increasing, natural gas use is increasing, and coal use is increasing. Of course, we have new things like nuclear and so on, but it's more or less the same over this period. Again, it is, um, it is global. There is a new 2021 World Energy Outlook available, but they don't have such a nice uh, picture, so I use this one. And here is for Central Asia. So you can see Kazakhstan is very much dependent on coal. It's a very dirty kind of fossil fuel, not so nice. And then they have some gas and some hydropower. Uzbekistan, you are very much dependent on gas and some hydropower. You have some hydropower, it's nice. And then Kyrgyzstan is very dominated by hydropower. So they are quite sustainable. Tajikistan even more so. It's almost only um, hydropower. And this goes to uh, electricity uh, production. And Turkmenistan is completely dependent on gas, as you see. So this is the situation in Central Asia. It's data I found from 2015, I think has not changed that much. Uh, now we have Swedish data. It might be interesting as an example of a European country. To see what are we using energy for is between 1970 and 2020. And you see about industry, transport, home, that is residential service and business. And uh, then sector, energy sector, and so on. So you see it's fairly constant over this period. Uh, when it comes to nuclear power, perhaps we should remember that nuclear power plants send out a lot of the heat they produce into cooling systems. So this is simply losses in nuclear power plants. It's quite much, as you see. It's about 100 or a little more, 150 terawatt hours per year in Sweden. Yes, and this is shown in a slightly different way. You see transport, a third, uh, households, almost a third, industry, a quarter, and services of various kinds is 13%. Uh, and agriculture is even less so. Agriculture that we need to have to have food is really using much little energy compared to the other sectors. This is an interesting table. So you see, uh, we are looking at energy intensity for various activities and how much we like them. And the activity that we like more than anything else is to have sex, you have a happiness index of 4.7. I don't know if you agree, but okay, very many people think so. And then socializing, that is meeting family and friends and so on, is four. It's very much relaxing, of course, eating. And then you go all the way down to working, housework, commuting, you know, traveling back and forth to work. It's very low happiness index, 2.6. And if we look at how much energy we use for these various things, you see very little energy for these first six things that we like so much and much energy for what we do not like at all, commuting, for example. So it's really, if we uh, would be a little less energetic when it comes to working and housework and computer use, etc., and little more into what we like much more, you know, meeting friends, etc., it would be much better from the energy point of view. We would be using less energy. So this is interesting to think about. Okay, so now we go to the carbon content of energy because it's critical since carbon means fossil uh, content, coal, oil, and gas. So how does this look like? And I have this quite old uh, chart. You see the carbon content of the energy is decreasing in European Union, in United States, in Japan and so on. But of course the total energy use is increasing. So even if the part of the energy that is dependent on fossils is slowly decreasing, it is um, um, still more uh, fossil coal is used. Now look at 
the Swedish figure, it starts at 15 about, um, you know, million uh, gram of coal per megajoules, grams of coal per megajoules, and you see it starting with 15 about and going down to almost five. So it's, it's taken away two thirds of the fossil fuel dependency. And this is very much after the oil crisis and so on, and we started to build nuclear power plants in the country. So of course, nuclear power is not dependent on fossils. So it's going down dramatically. Now, of course, I should say that nuclear power is decreasing in Sweden and it's replaced very much by wind energy, which is not dependent on fossil coal either. But anyhow, you see what it looks like here. It's possible to get out of the fossil fuel dependency. Um, th this is another figure from Sweden where you see that biofuels are increasing, oil and petroleum products are decreasing. It's big here and it's much less here. And then of course you see that nuclear fuel uranium is increasing, although it's now starting to decrease. And wind power, you don't see so much, but it is increasing rapidly nowadays. Hydropower is quite constant in the country. You see here, you see even more so, it's another way to see the same thing. Wind power is increasing quite much actually in the last few years. We are building wind power uh, parks in the oceans or in the seas around the country, the Baltic Sea in particular, but also on the West Coast. Okay, so here you see the other ways are fairly constant. Okay, so next pictures are about storage of energy. We need to be able to store energy. So we have it when we need it, not when we produce it necessarily. So of course there are enormous amounts of energy is stored in biomass in our forests. So this is of course very good. The question is how to harvest this and how to turn it into electricity, for example, or heat, whatever. Uh, so of course, when we take out timber from our forest, there are a lot of branches and roots and so on that needs to be taken care of. And this is done. It's used in power plants. So quite many power plants in the country are run on biomass like this. So that's good to know. Of course, we have hydropower. And hydropower energy is stored in the reservoirs that is upstream from the hydropower plants. So uh, often quite small rivers were turned into huge reservoirs. Of course, uh, then flooding, flooding big areas. So there is an environmental cost for doing this, but anyhow, it's a way to store energy. And then when energy is needed, electricity is needed, you can empty these reservoirs and produce electricity. And in fact, it's also possible quite efficiently to pump back water. If you have an excess of electricity, you can pump back water into the reservoirs. It's quite a good way to store energy. And this is another way you can use the electricity when it's produced in big amounts in an electrolyzer, which splits um, water into the, its two components, oxygen and hydrogen. And oxygen, of course, goes out into the air as oxygen gas, and hydrogen becomes hydrogen gas, and that is stored in uh, containers, you see here. And of course, this is, th there is such a, um, um, technology that hydrogen gas is stored and is being sent in networks and so on. But of course, hydrogen gas is very flammable. So it is some danger connected to this. So some people prefer to turn the hydrogen gas to ammonium. It's combined with um, nitrogen, nitrogen gas, turn into ammonium or some other nitrogen compound and it's stored much more easily. And it's also usable as, for example, um, uh, for, for agriculture where they need ammonium for their feeds. So this is one way to make it less um, 
uh, difficult because ma managing hydrogen has some difficulties. But it's used. For example, you can now uh, use hydrogen in cars, hydrogen cars. Then uh, I'll come back to that, but um, that's possible. Then you have hydrogen stored under a pressure of about seven atmospheres. This is possible. And the same thing, of course, for homes. And then we have the batteries, most well known perhaps. And you see the use of batteries, this is, this is the global situation. The use of batteries is rapidly increasing, very quickly. It's even sort of the exponential growth. And of course, much of it is coming into batteries for cars. You see, the blue part is electric vehicles, EVs. Uh, so that's it. But you also have consumer electronics, it's a green, green one. And you have commercial electric vehicles, it means, you know, uh, lorries and uh, trucks and so on. It's all being used in this way. So this is very rapidly increasing. It's a lithium ion batteries. So we, we hope this, in Sweden now, there are several huge industrial facilities are being um, built for producing batteries. So this will be a big thing in the future, big thing. Okay, let's talk about energy efficiency, how to use energy more efficient. You know, when looking at energy, we have to ask ourselves about energy efficiency and energy sufficiency, how much do we need really? And energy sufficiency we have partly talked about when it comes to production of energy. So now we'll talk about efficiency. Of course, the most simple way is to conserve the energy that we have received. So be very careful and not losing energy in your factories, in your homes and so on. And the very simple things is to isolate, insulate, pipes, covers, containers, and so on. Uh, this is a so-called low hanging fruit to do such a thing. And you can, you, you can I, I'll give you some examples in a while, but you can, you can save a lot of energy by simply insulation. And of course, a very dramatic case of insulation is to build a passive energy house. It's a house where it's so well insulated that the energy produced by the people living in them, you know, a person is about 100 watts, remember? And some equipment like, you know, cooking, of course, you have stoves, uh, you, you um, have laundry machines, all these things produced heat. So if you have a well insulated house, you can have a passive energy house. It means that it consumes less than 15 uh, kilowatt hours per year and square meter. That is a different, the definition of a passive energy house. Uh, you see he's building one, the wall on the passive energy house is about 70 centimeters. And of course, a lot of insulation. And the windows are also well designed to um, save energy. Windows are a very important part of this. And then, of course, another important part of this is the ventilation. So the uh, air that gets into the house is heated in the heat exchanger. And when the air leaves the house, it's also passing a heat exchanger. So the heat in the air is being picked up. And these people are standing in front of a passive energy house. I've been into several and it's very pleasant to be in them. Um, for example, on this house, you see there is a solar cells on the roof, meaning that they produce their own electricity. And sometimes some of these houses have a small, um, uh, what is it called now, um, 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 heater that picks up uh, energy from the ground. Uh, what is this called now? Someone remember the name for it. Um, anyhow, you can have a small such heat pump uh, 
taking energy from the ground and it's of course run by the electricity that's produced here and you are completely self-sufficient. So notice now renewable energy is a local thing very much. Fossil fuel is a large scale thing. You become very much dependent on someone that sells the fossil energy to you. Um, for example, now we are regretting very much that we are so dependent on Russia when it comes to fossil fuel. It would be much better to have self supply of energy, renewable energy. Well, anyhow, let's go on. Of course, you can also be more efficient by using new technologies. And this is about for lightning. Uh, this is a street in Italy where all the street lamps have been changed into LED, you know, light emission diode lamps. They use almost 10 times less, sometimes between 5 and 10 times less electricity for producing the same amount of light. So that's very, very efficient. And nowadays in Europe, it's not allowed to have conventional lamps. You only have to use lead lamps. I don't know how it is in your country. And of course you can have electric cars. It needs a car needs a battery and of course it needs to be fed by uh, electricity from somewhere. So this is one example how it's uh, you know charging its battery. And remember now when a combustion energy, conventional car, using fuels like um, gasoline and so on, about 15% of the energy comes to the wheels, running the wheels. So it's very inefficient. Most of it becomes heat. But with an electric energy, about 90% comes to the wheels. So it's much, much more efficient. So this is also improved technology. Of course, you, you can have cars that are fed by hydrogen, as I mentioned, or some other biofuel, and then you have a, a equipment to turn this into electricity in the car. That's also possible. And this is also worth mentioning that there are quite many um, heat stations, power stations, heat stations in the countries. For example, in Europe, there are very many heat stations that are burning. Uh, oil, gas, and so on to produce heat because in the winters it becomes cold. Now it's very much possible to use this heat also to produce electricity. It's called cogeneration. So the power station should be very careful and supplying heat not only to the stream of hot water as you have up here on the top. A uh, cooling heating system becomes, you can also cool in this way. It should also put some of its heat into a turbine and this turbine runs a generator and the generator produces electricity. So this is also very important to think about. And uh, of course it's always very important to think about increased demand management instead of production all the time. So you, you can look here that if you have coal here you use coal, um, you know, corresponding to one kilowatt hour to produce electricity or light. This is a fine and service, so to speak. Uh, here you have to burn it to produce steam. You lose 10% here, you lose 10%. That steam has to go into a turbine. Now you lose more and it goes into a generator. You, it, you lose more. And then electricity goes to the lamp, and in the lamp you use you lose even more. So in the end of this kilowatt hour, in the beginning, it's only one and a half percent left for the service that we enjoy. So of course it's much much better to be more efficient in this end than in that end. So if you can, for example, uh, change this into a LED lamp, which is using much more of the electricity to produce light, then you gain a lot here, and so, and so on. If you can use some of the steam here produced also for heating something, you are also uh, in cogeneration, you're also gaining something.
So demand management is much better than increased production. Remember this. You should be clever when it comes to taking care of your energy, not about buying more energy. You should not do that. Okay, I will give a few examples how people have been working with this in large companies. And this is one case the Swedish Energy Authority said that all companies who take part in this project we are running, they will be uh, saved from paying energy taxes. You don't have to pay energy taxes at all. So this was quite popular. So 100 companies joined this project. Requirement on them was that first make a complete energy use mapping. They should make up a, a, you know, a map or a report of what they're using their energy for and in what kind of energy and so on. Then sh they should all introduce a certified energy management system. There are such systems, you know, the ISO systems. And uh, all this uh, resulted in 1,247 projects in these 100 companies. And they used 1.47 terawatt hours less electricity an annually because of these improvements. And they invested 700 million Swedish crowns. This is about $70 million, if you wish. And the energy cost because of these uh, investments was reduced by 400 million Swedish crowns. This is $40 million. So you can see from these figures that average return of investment was one and a half year. After one and a half year, they're just earning money. They don't pay anything. So it's extremely efficient here. And the tax reductions that they all paid less tax. It was only 150 million Swedish crowns. You see, this is less important than what they achieved themselves. So I think this is quite interesting. And, and I give you one example. It is from a uh, large uh, company north of where I live. What did they do? They, they, there were two ladies engineers who actually were responsible for running this project at this particular big factory. So they wrote here a background report. They took photos from all the, you know, all the factory and all the corners. They came up with proposals. They talked to the people working in the factory in each particular site. Uh, they asked them for, you know, uh, what you think we could do, etc. And of course, they looked into the drawbacks and so on. And they made calculations on kilowatt hours, investments needed, and return of investments and so on. And then you see, this is what these two engineers were able to do was to run 52 projects during these two years the project was. So what did they do? Well, they adjusted temperature, perhaps it didn't need to be so very high. They could recover heat in many places. They exchanged the valves. So the pumped the heat um, containing liquids were, uh, you know, optimized, they insulated very many pipes and all many containers. They changed some routines. For example, they don't need to have things go all the day if it's only used a small part of the day. They changed the lightning, we call it lead lightning. Toilets, for example, you don't need to have the lights in the toilet shining when no one is there. Very simple thing, many of them. And what did happen is that a lot of other you know, um, improvements were happening at the same time as a consequence. They used less water. They had decreased fire risks. They had less pollutants in the air. They had led less noise in the factory. So uh, the, the first two years then they reduced uh, the energy consumption with 19,000 megawatt hours per year. And they had another under planning 32,000, 33,000 megawatt hours per year was under planning when this report came up. So you see in factories, much can be done just by energy efficiency. And of course, if we go, if you look at the municipal level on the local um, um, municipality, you have 
uh, increased your renewable energy resources have some advantages that should be uh, one should remember. You promote local development because you know you have to do something on the local level. It creates new jobs. Of course, it takes away climate change very much by having renewables instead of fossils. Of course, people need to develop their competence, technological competence. Engineers have to learn a lot, but also create social capital because uh, people need to interact very much more than otherwise. And of course, this is sustainable development. This is sustainable development. This is just one example from a small town close to where I live. It has about 35,000 inhabitants. This is a power station of this, uh, this uh, town. It uses only uh, biofuel. It produces heat for the entire town. It produces all the electricity needed by cogeneration. And the, the biofuel that it uses is taken from energy plants. So there are growing energy plants on feeds. And these fields are being fed by um, the, um, uh, the, the wastewater treatment plants. The wastewater treatment plant are not treating the water completely. Instead, it sends it to the growing fields of the energy plants. So that's where the uh, resources from the toilets end up. Um, so this is a good example of how you can produce something locally. This is from Uppsala where I live. You see here we collect all the food waste, much from household, but also, you know, of course, restaurants, shops, etc. And all organic waste, in fact, and send them to a biogas station where they are turned into methane biogas. And these biogas are used for running the buses. So when this picture was taken now, it is a little more, but then it was 83 buses running on locally produced biogas. So you see again, of course, you have a biogas station, you have all the competences needed for running such buses. By the way, they have less pollutants, they are less noisy, so they are quite pleasant to have these buses. Uh, this is one final example from Gussing. It's a small place in Austria further south on the border to Hungary and it started in 1992 to run a project uh, to become self-sufficient in electricity, heating and transport. That was the goal and it was the uh, mayor of the town and one engineer that just came to the town, lived there, but he had been, you know, uh, taking his exam from Vienna, taking to the university, he came back and it's, he agreed to work on this project with the, um, with the mayor of the town. They received some money from European Union. They created 60 new companies. They had 1,500 new jobs. And in fact, you should remember that because of uh, the situation in Gussing, most people commuted to other places to work. And now they could stop commuting, which of course is good. So they had something to do back in their hometown instead. And on top of this, Gussing had more energy than it needed, so it could sell energy to other places around them with a, uh, you know, gain $28 million yearly. And of course, they reduced their carbon dioxide uh, emissions, climate emissions, by more than 80%. And it's worthwhile looking at this little link here because there is a film of 15 minutes where you can see all of this. It's quite interesting film to look at. And this is just a uh, picture, a map of Austria, where you can see all the small towns that started to be more energy independent, producing their own, own all energy locally. So, and this is just one example. There are many networks of municipalities in the world, in the world where they, they work on local energy production. In the United States, you have the post-carbon cities. In Europe in particular, but in fact, all over the world, we have local renewables initiative. It's a project run by ECLEI, which has been around for a very long time, since the 1980s. 
local authorities for sustainability. In Australia, you have solar cities. In Japan, you have energy autonomy network, and then they have transition towns. It started in, in UK, uh, and it's on many places, and more and more and more. So that is the end of my examples. It has been running a little more than 30 minutes, sorry for that. But uh, now there is the break, and you should have some things you can discuss during the first 10 minutes of these breaks, and then we'll uh, come back together and discuss. Please be prepared to comment and ask questions. Please remember. Thank you very much. You know, I think we should continue now. So yes. we are 38 and we are a little late as we used to be, but it's Eshkovat Arzikolov, professor at, uh, of physics in, in uh, Samarkand yeah. University, which has well. So please, please, it's your turn. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I will share my screen with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is normally. Yeah. Uh, we do, we see the whole presentation, please. You have the same problem I had, you know, you have to press. Uh, yeah. some the five, five. You don't see my screen. Yes, we see your screen, but please uh, 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 start what's called the uh, presentation yeah, up one. there, something. Yeah, it should be called presentations or something like that. Mm -hmm. Presentation mode. Damla ekranda bütün toluk korsun yaptı da. Eman toluk ne yaptı? Mende toluk kuyuyor. F F beş şu bas varsa izmen bir toluk bulalım. Yo F beş bir tane bu yerden çıksa bulalım. Is okay? No, we see your second slide now. We should try to find presentation. I don't know. I don't know. What's happening? Maybe I will show this small area. It's okay? Uh, yeah, I guess oh. so. <clears throat> yes, except for the ones with a lot of... Every, every... No, yeah. mm -hmm. Is it normally? Yes? No, not really. It's uh, presentation mode. Try up there, perhaps. Or I, I was actually uh, pressing on what was on the top a couple of times and came into the right mode. On top, on top of your screen, share screen mode. You had share screen, or you press something up there on the very top of the. Hmm. I don't know what. What's happening? I don't know. In my screen, it is normally. I understand. Yes, yes. I, I had the same problem, but I was able to solve it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. If they should ask for this, but I'm not. I'm not asking if they should ask for this, but I'm not. I don't know, maybe our computer system is wrong. Yeah, I don't he, he, tries, he tries to uh, press five, uh, F5 and it doesn't happen. I mean, the, the full, full the desktop screen doesn't happen, I mean, isn't happening. Okay, then if you can't let's let's uh, run it in this way you are doing right now because we see we see it yes mm -hmm. okay okay mm -hmm. okay thank you what for you
And I would like to um, say thanks our Swedish uh, colleagues for organizing this course. This course for us very important um, uh, two case. Uh, we will have an European experience and as our students also know um, European uh, study methods. Uh, it, we we uh, get very uh, big benefit of this course. Uh, and now I would like to say about energy. I'll say last his presentation, energy is play key role in, uh, in home lean. And uh, during, during development, they use energy per capita, as uh, says uh, Lash, is increasing. In uh, nowadays, uh, about uh, 215 uh, kilowatt hours per uh, day. It is right, Lash? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a big problem. Uh, if we need more energy and we can do more impact in nature. It is non-sustainable. Non uh, in uh, last, last, uh, and uh, when we use energy for metabolism, in uh, energy for uh, live, and then it was very sustainable. And human lives in harmony with nature. It's right. And we, uh, I am as physics, uh, physics, and my presentation more closely to physics. And sometimes it, it will be um, uh, difficult for you. Uh, you can ask if, if sometimes will be uh, difficult. And energy, what is energy? Uh, it, as uh, physics say, energy is ability, uh, ability to walk, to do walk. And um, for our life, energy uh, plays a key role and we need, we need energy more and more. But natural resource of uh, energy as coal and gas and oil is became more less and less. We must find uh, uh, new energy sources in this time in the world. We have several uh, sources of uh, renewable energy resource. I would like say about this. In this uh, slide, you can see uh, resource limits and practical potential renewable energy resources. First of them, uh, we will say about oceans energy resource. What kind of resources is in ocean. There are uh, several uh, sources. It is energy of waves, energy of tidal, energy of um, ocean streams, and uh, energy of of ocean or ocean thermal energy resource also. But Uzbekistan so from far oceans and this energy resources for us uh, may be as dream. No, but other countries as Sweden, this is uh, energy resources is very good and I think they uh, use it is very well. And second is 
is hydro energy. Hydro energy in Uzbekistan also has uh, um, used it in practice. We have about 13 uh, percent, percent uh, energy resources we uh, uh, get from hydro, uh, hydro power plants. In, in the world, uh, uh, resource limit is about five, five uh, terawatts, but uh, practical uh, potential is uh, about uh, two uh, mig, uh, terawatts. And this is also uh, for Uzbekistan uh, can uh, play a role for uh, sub energy supply our Republic. Last year, our president um, uh, in Uzbekistan into 2026 20, years, uh, we will build uh, new uh, eight hydro uh, electrical power plants and uh, the uh, 30% of all energy will be, we get is uh, hydro electro uh, power plants. And so it is biomass energy. It, it is also um, is a, a renewable, renewable uh, sources of energy. Uh, in biomass, we use uh, ordinary um, plants in the animals in other uh, wood uh, it's, it, in Uzbekistan to also has a huge potential biomass uh, in Soviet time uh, was a program uh, to uh, produce gas from um, cotton from cotton uh, from cotton. It, it, it is very interesting because in our country is very huge um, uh, uh, cotton plants. We have uh, enough resources for biomass, uh, biogas generation. And uh, the fuse is geothermal energy resource. Geothermal, resource, ge, uh, geothermal resources uh, came from earth, from earth's heat. We can use uh, geysers. It is very hot uh, water resource, uh, water sources, which can be used uh, in any case for heating and generation electricity. It also, um, it is big, uh, possibility, but in Uzbekistan, we have not uh, practical and other um, resources on this um, source. And uh, the uh, uh, five is wind energy resources. Wind energy resources also uh, uh, here have the big uh, possibility in Uzbekistan our scientists from uh, together uh, uh, Germany uh, specialists, uh, they are study possibility uh, wind energy in Uzbekistan and uh, yeah, it is a uh, big possibility. In the world, the <coughs> resource limit more than 70 terawatt. It is very big potential and practical potential is about five terawatt. It is told you good, uh, we can use this energy in future. And this, the last is solar energy. Solar energy is very big, big sources of renewable energy. And uh, practical resource limit in the world, it, it is more than 100 terawatts and uh, practical potential is about 20 terawatts. And um, 
sun power heating is about uh, 165,000 terawatts. It's very big, big energy. And one house, we have 14 terawatt years. It is, it is enough for annual world use energy. If we use uh, one percent of this energy, it is will be enough for for all the world. It is very big potential uh, in the world. In in our case, in Uzbekistan is uh, average uh, 300, 320 days per year is sunshine. And uh, Uzbekistan is sunny country. And this energy may be um, solve our problems in energy, energy problems. And our president um, also interesting this energy sources and in Uzbekistan new, new feature will be uh, uh, built uh, solar power station in five or uh, seven uh, uh, districts in our country will be uh, built a solar power station with uh, capacity 100 and 115 terawatts. It is good um, uh, uh, beginning for our republic. In the, uh, at, uh, um, this slide, you can uh, shell sustained growth scenario. It is very interesting. And the, uh, there we can see uh, the red is traditional bio uh, energy sources. Uh, the second is green is coal. Uh, then uh, more uh, oil and gas and blue gas and uh, blue also hydro energy and uh, violet is nuclear and blue and wind. Uh, red is biomass, uh, uh, orange is solar, and uh, uh, the, um, mm -hmm. I know, <laughs> I forgot, and geothermal, and the last is surprise. What is a surprise? And we know everything in the world, in the, uh, our around have uh, energy. But we couldn't know how to get this energy. Maybe in future, we can get from stone and other things also energy. It will uh, surprise energy. No, this is uh, shows that uh, traditional sources energy became more or less in less the energy, uh, wind energy, biomass energy, solar energy, or uh, uh, renewable energy resources became more and more. In future, uh, in the world, uh, we will use it only uh, renewable energy resource. And this uh, slide shows uh, global energy consumption from 2000 and 2020. And this shows that uh, traditional sources of energy is became is more less, but energy of hydro and other new uh, re renewable energies is increasing. It shows uh, in future uh, we must use only uh, renewable energy resources. In Uzbekistan, in Uzbekistan, uh, it ha Uzbekistan has 40 hydro and thermal power stations. They generated about 50 million kilowatts electric energy per year. It is 
uh, um, probably uh, equal uh, Swedish energy produced, but uh, Swedish um, population is more three times than our. Uh, and and it, it shows we use more less energy than uh, European countries. From, is, from this energy, 83% uh, generated in thermal power stations. This is very big. Um, uh, and other 70% is hydro, hydroelectrical power station. And um, renewable energy uh, co content is less than 1%. Well, it is also in future, uh, in uh, 20, 30 years, uh, we plan it uh, increase renewable energy content about 30%. It is very big, big plan. Uh, annual solar potential in Uzbekistan is equal 50 billion and uh, 95, uh, 95.3 million tons of oil equivalent. If we use 1% of them, it is, will be more 120 times we need. It is very big potential and for, for this case, we must do uh, uh, use uh, these energy resources. In this table, we, you can see renewable energy resources in Uzbekistan. Solar energy is a very big potential. And second is uh, um, uh, uh, hydro electrical potential, then biomass, then uh, wind energy, wind energy, and the same, the last is geothermal energy. In it, some cases in our country, we, uh, we don't know uh, how much, how much we can use this energy. And uh, in future, also uh, we will uh, do some uh, how we use these energy resources. In this, in this map, um, distribution wind, wind energy in Uzbekistan. If velocity is wind more than three meter per second, it is um, normally for use. If less is the velocity wind, it is um, uh, produce electricity will be no rental. For this case, in Uzbekistan, it has big, um, big um, possibility to use uh, wind energy. Nowadays, in our country, uh, uh, beginning built two uh, wind energy station in Karakal, Pakistan. Because in Karakal, Pakistan is uh, uh, wind velocity and the wind potential is very big. Uh, <coughs> the second, uh, uh, the, the next slide is you can uh, see uh, daily amount of direct solar radiation in Uzbekistan. Uh, there also we have some zones where solar radiation is very big. Uh, in July, in summer time, uh, one meter co meter uh, square, uh, we can get about one hundred. 16, 1016 watt energy. It is big potential. And uh, now 
in Uzbekistan uh, uh, open an international solar energy institute uh, uh, the institute uh, study of possibility use uh, solar energy potential Republic of Uzbekistan and the next slide uh, we uh, we we use why so many PV technologies? Because in the world we have no material which will absorb any any radiation, any solar radiation. <coughs> and for this case, uh, for every uh, uh, every uh, uh, radiation ranges, we must prepare. Uh, uh, solar cells. For this case, we have many, many solar PV technologies. And uh, how do work photovoltaic basics? We must do uh, PN junction. We must have PN junction. What is PN junction? In the world, 19% uh, uh, solar cells works on beta p injection. p injection, it is contact uh, two types semiconductor materials for N type uh, electricity current and N type, uh, P type um, current electricity. N type, uh, uh, N -type uh, electricity, uh, basic carrier. Uh, Charge charges is electrons and P type semiconductors, basic charge carriers is holes. And we, we when uh, contact, when, when we will contact these two part materials, in the uh, border is uh, these materials uh, uh, forming uh, electricity field, which, which, uh, generated electricity. It is uh, uh, in this picture you can see uh, sun shines uh, is solar radiation uh, in PV models and there we uh, can produce electricity and if we we, we will something uh, we can, can uh, get electricity. And how do we making semiconductors N or P type? Uh, uh, formally uh, produce uh, solar cells is non-sustainability. Why? Uh, I, I say uh, um, uh, 90% uh, solar cells uh, based on silicon. For get silicon, for synthesis silicon, we must do some um, technologies. Uh, they are very bad impact in nature. And for this case, we, uh, we can say that Solar technology, uh, solar cells technology is non-sustainable. But uh, nowadays we have some new technologies which are more sustainable and uh, they can use it uh, for generating generating electricity from solar energy. Uh, for this case, uh, uh, I, I will explain how to we can. Uh, N-type semiconductors and uh, P-type. If uh, in in case silicon, if we doped uh, silicon with atoms, phosphorus atoms, we can get N-type semiconductors. If we doped uh, silicon uh, uh, wafers uh, with boron atoms, we can get P-type semiconductor. If we will contact these two type materials, we can get 
P injection, which uh, is base of solar cells. In this uh, picture, you can see uh, the photovoltaic cell structure. It is, uh, first it's covered uh, in solar cells, uh, usually uh, we can put in the uh, um, <clears throat> in uh, yes, uh, natural conditions in for uh, uh, for uh, safe uh, uh, for safe uh, uh, solar cells we can cover uh, uh, surface of uh, cells with uh, tra transparent uh, materials, uh, which uh, sell, serve uh, safe our materials, because silicon is very uh, uh, material which we can easily break, break, breaking. For this, uh, we must cover this uh, cover uh, surface of. Solar cells with some transparency uh, adhesive uh, uh, Then we can use front contact. Front contact usually it is a very uh, narrow metallic say um, uh, and P type semiconductor is then N type semiconductor and bend back contact is fully uh, consists of metals. It is uh, is a structure of photovoltaic cells. And solar efficiency is this uh, solar cells. We, we, uh, we can uh, calculate for this uh, form. And uh, there is one of uh, of problem uh, uh, we, when we use solar uh, solar energy we can use all, uh, land resources big land resource uh, for uh, for increasing land resource we we can increase uh, uh, efficiency then uh, uh, if is if efficiency solar cells is very high we can use small lenses for get uh, more energy. If for is uh, one of problem in solar energy. And how uh, photovoltaic building blocks, uh, at photovoltaic cells, and from photovoltaic cells, we can photovoltaic model and model, and then from model, with, uh, we can get arrays and systems in there is uh, 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 for storage of energy. In night time, we can uh, we we cannot get any energy from sun. And for this case, we must storage of energy. And uh, Lars, as Lars uh, say uh, his presentation, for energy storage is also big problems from energy, energetic. And how uh, photovoltaics, how uh, photovoltaics system types we can. A DC system, it is a digital current system. This is only uh, digital uh, photovoltaics. But our electric, electric, electricity system is working is alternative electrical signals. For this case, we must have some inventor to generate, to change the DC energy to alternative energy. So it is for this case, we uh, can use uh, this is uh, inventors. And on this uh, slide, you can show um, uh, increasing efficiency solar cells by 
uh, years. Uh, there, uh, as uh, says, large and for solar energy, we can use uh, two uh, methods uh, for uh, photovoltaics and concentrated photovoltaics. For, if we use concentrated photovoltaics, we can get more energy. But there is some problems uh, when we use concentrated solar energy. Uh, the temperature of solar cells is increasing and this came some problems uh, uh, which uh, decreases of efficiency. Uh, it is also it has some problems. Yeah. Ah, there is one case study for our stu master students. Uh, if we, um, how much electricity can be pr produced in air if the surface of large Uzbek tract, it is from Andijan to Nukus. It is very long tract in Uzbekistan, about 100, 1,700 kilometers. It is very big and very long way, highway, and if we cover the, uh, the surface of this uh, tract, how, how much electricity, electricity can be produced? In, uh, and if this is done, how much greenhouse gases will not be uh, realized into the atmosphere? And yeah, uh, uh, in, in last, I will show some uh, pictures from our visit to uh, solar photoelectric system, which will build in Samarkand region. It, it is near Samarkand city, and we, our students, uh, master students and bachelor students will be yesterday, uh, we will uh, uh, visited in this uh, place and you can mm, uh, show some information about um, uh, passport of this electric uh, power station and uh, mapping and uh, uh, project expert benefits and uh, solar atoms uh, and how, which, which uh, uh, companies will be uh, build this power station in uh, primary and uh, loc location. And this power station, it is in, uh, this is a stadium in Beijing. It is a bird's home. Uh, in this building, uh, use it only solar energy, no other energy. Uh, and last slide, uh, the uh, lecture for to read in our um, uh, book for, uh, with Lash in Natalia Kishina, Energy Climate. You can get more information about our projects. Thank you for your attention.